We're almost up to, well, the year being halfway through and one of the more, I guess, entertaining trials. Uh, I mean, it's a horrible situation, but uh, entertaining trials was the Alec Murtaugh trial that we witnessed earlier in the year. And Judge Clifton Newman, who I really liked, I thought he was a very good judge on that case, uh, had kind of a sense of humor, kind of kept things going uh, and seemed very fair for what it, it was. Uh, He recently uh, sat down doing an interview talking about his experiences on the Today Show uh, and his thoughts about Alec Murdoch. So we're going to talk about that interview today, me and Stacey, uh, and and hear a perspective that, you know, you you see expressions on people's faces, and he made some. It's now interesting Mm -hmm. to kind of go behind that curtain and understand exactly what was going through his mind while sitting on the bench as all of that chaos unfolded. Uh, that was truly an extremely bizarre case. I know you had watched it too, right? Yeah, I did. And what I found fascinating was that Alex was a, he was an attorney. So he, he knew the ins and outs of a courtroom. He mm-hmm. knew exactly how to manage all of it. And it's got to be fascinating from the judge's perspective to be sitting there and seeing somebody. I mean, it's almost like, like a doctor performing surgery on another doctor, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of a a weirdness, a, a like a, a weird thing that just sits over the courtroom, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's what is, this person knows inside baseball, essentially, and yeah. how are they going to use their expertise to their own advantage? Because clearly, he's always done that in every aspect of his life. And he certainly did make an attempt. I will give him that. He made an attempt. He put himself on the stand, which was probably the dumbest thing he could have done. Right. But when you're a narcissist and you think that you can do it, he made a shot. I mean, he certainly acted. He acted, uh, you know, there was the snot flying everywhere. And I got to say, he he did put on quite the performance. It wouldn't be one of those performances, though, if you're auditioning someone for Broadway, you'd be like, yeah, I don't think so. But you know what? There's the uh, the community theater down the road that, <laughs> right. that really needs someone right now. You may need to start as janitor, but you might work your way up into like like uh, man number eight on the uh, the background of a Christmas Carol or something at some point with your acting skills. But he really had a lot of passion while he, he was was performing. You know, and that sells people. I mean, just look how many people are super passionate that can sell shit just by being passionate and being excited yeah. about talking about something. I mean, I got to tell you right now, I have this new product, uh, Stacy, that that's amazing. It allows <laughs> you to understand what your cats are saying just by holding your phone up to it. And, 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 if, I, and if I told you that this was available right now and it's not $200, it's not $300, it's, Seven easy payments of forty nine ninety nine. What would you say? Uh, I'd be like, and and what's the name? Because I'm on the app store and I can't find it. It's it's the Cato <laughs> speaker. The Cato <laughs> speaker is what it's called, and we can make this happen right now. And you can I tell you, you know, if seven. Let's make it four payments right now. Okay, yeah. You can hear, but if you order now, you'll get another one free. Oh, but wait, there's more. Yeah. You you can also you'll also get a set of seven juicers that you just stick into the orange and then juice comes out and we're going to throw in the Miracle Blade seventy four. Uh, but mir- that's how people work. That's how people operate. They they're just like oh this is amazing. And you know this is why I'm <laughs> I worked in marketing for a long time. I had a marketing company and I eventually got sick of it and just started talking about horrible people on podcasts. <laughs> but. <laughs> But but one of my biggest downfalls in that, and it worked great. I, I was very successful at it, and it, it allowed me to live a, a nice life, and then I got into this. Uh, but it was, my biggest thing was I always, uh, it was hard for me to look at things from other people's perspective or a consumer perspective because I see the bullshit in everything, yeah. and it's very hard for me to see something and go, yeah, people are going to see right through. They're, they're, they're not going to see through that. I always assume people will see through the bullshit when in reality, 90 some percent won't. It's always me putting myself out there saying, yeah, it's, it, it, everybody's going to see through that. But no, they no. really won't. Uh, so that was 
<laughs> I was good at the creative, not so much the uh, the marketing execution of it. Um, well, and and people are once they feel like they're getting a bargain, that they're getting more mm-hmm. than what they paid for, yep. they're sold. So if you can if you can throw in everything, if you can give yeah. them that feeling that they're getting more than than they, what they bargained for. They're all in. I was also horrible at the selling ass. I'm not a salesperson and I never made a cold call in my entire career. People always came to me through referrals and stuff because they liked the creative that I did. But in that time period as well, people would be like, what do you think about this? What do you, and I guess I probably should have been using, I guess, more salesy tactics, but I just, I don't like lying to people. So I'd always be like, that's a horrible idea. Like, here's why it's not going to work. Like, like, no, like, don't waste your money on that. They're like, we want to spend this much money on this radio station. Like, that's a bad idea. Like, they're not even your demographic. Like, I could be like, great idea. Yes, let me take your money right now and we'll buy whatever the hell you just spew out you think you want. But I would talk myself out of so many deals because I would be too honest. And then they wouldn't like the opposition of somebody telling them that they were wrong. And then they'd go to somebody else who would just say yes. And then they, you know, make their buy and waste a lot of money. But I don't know. I was always just like too, too raw about it and, and honest. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about uh, Alec Murdoch. Let's talk about Judge Clifton Newman. Uh, uh, this is a very bizarre story. If you you know it, go back and, and learn about it. South Carolina town of uh, Waterboro, the curtain closed on the grisly spectacle uh, of Alex Murdoch, the once respected lawyer, uh, was sentenced to two life terms for the chilling double murder of his wife and son. In the high profile case, which played out over a grueling six week trial, it ensnared a lot of attention. Judge Clifton Newman, he's now speaking out about what he felt while he was in that courtroom, saying, I felt sorry for him. That's what he told today. Uh, in an interview that uh, aired uh, just earlier this week, offering rare insight into the heartbreaking personal drama at the center of the trial. He further described the remorse he felt for the convicted man, painting a very vivid picture of Murdoch's predicament as one that would drive anyone to the edge of desperation. If there's a hole that he could go into, he would dive in that hole and keep going to the lowest depths, Newman said, in a voice heavy with sympathy. His sentiment underscored the bleak path that led Murdoch, the 55-year-old former personal injury lawyer uh, and part-time prosecutor, to stand accused of fatally shooting his wife, Maggie Murdoch, and their son, Paul Murdoch, on June 7th 7th of 2021. On that fateful day, uh, the calm of South Carolina, the community, it was shattered in that that, uh, low country. After just three hours of deliberation, the Colton County jury convicted Murdoch on all counts, laying bare the tragic end of a family mirrored in turmoil. During his sentencing on March 3rd, Newman presided over the courtroom with the stern resolve expected of a judge, but also with the palpable empathy of a father. He told Murdaugh that the memory of his son and wife would haunt him, an eerie specter that would trail his every waking hour and disturb his sleep, a chilling reminder of the horrific act that he had committed. A legal spectacle drew the attention of hundreds of journalists and curious onlookers who descended upon Waterboro, turning the quiet town into an unwilling stage for the unfolding drama. Amidst the public frenzy, Netflix even released a docuseries spotlighting the murky history of the Murdoch family, adding a layer of Hollywood glitz to an already sensational story. Let's not forget the HBO one either, which I thought was very well done. Yet for Judge Newman... The widespread interest came as no surprise. After all, the case was stuffed with thrillers, a high-profile lawyer, tragic death of a wife and a child, allegations of embezzlement and a sordid tale of a man's descent into drug addiction. Which I should note, we've never really proven the drug addiction. There's been the accusations. There's been the admittal to the drug addictions. There's never been a true doctor or diagnosis or any sort of medical evidence that shows that he was ever addicted to anything. Which You think it was just an excuse? I think it was possibly. I don't know it was to the extent that he claimed it was, because I don't think he'd be functional if it was to the extent that he claimed it was. And I know people go, well, you know, you build up a tolerance. Yes, you do to a certain extent. But the human body can only take so much. Yeah. And at some point, I don't care who the hell you are, it will give out. And his obviously did not. Murdoch, who was disbarred for financial crimes as part of a formidable lineage of lawyers, the Murdoch family had several as the top prosecutor for five counties 
in South Carolina's low country for nearly nine decades. That's how you get away with things forever. Mm -hmm. Their name's mm -hmm. synonymous with power and influence and also making people shut the fuck up and never really saying anything about some of the right. strange misdeeds that may have been going on in the Murdoch family for nine decades. However, the family's reign met that bitter end as Murdoch's web of lies and deceit led to his cataclysmic downfall. Despite the conviction, Murdoch remained unbroken, a testament to his defiant spirit dressed in a tan jumpsuit and shackles. He maintained his innocence till the very end. I respect, right, saying, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. He declared, his voice echoing in that hushed courtroom. I would never under any circumstance hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never under any circumstance hurt my son, Paul. However, Newman's response offered a window into the possible transformation that drugs can wreak. Uh, it might not have been you, he noted. It might have been the monster you've become when you take 15, 20, 30, 40, 60 opioid pills. Maybe you become another person, he said in court. Yet the saga is far from over. Murdoch now faces still more than 100 counts of financial crimes accused of stealing millions from clients and his former law firm. As if this was not enough, he awaits a deposition in a wrongful death lawsuit tied to the 2019 boat crash that claimed the life of 19-year-old Mallory Beach, a tragic incident allegedly caused by his son Paul's drunken antics. Oh, yeah, I yeah. forgot about that. That's coming up, too, and we'll, of course, cover that. The story of Alex Murdoch serves as a chilling reminder of a fall from grace, a man who once wielded impressive power only to find himself caught in a devastating cycle of crime and personal tragedy. Wow. Just yeah. every everything he touches seems to have turned to shit. It did. I mean, for a while, it, it, it's, I mean, it, it turned to shit for others, but it turned to gold for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the, the, when you look at so many of these other cases, I mean, especially when we're now looking at the Gloria Satterfield case, uh, of him behind bars, still playing games, saying, oh, I lied about that. So you probably should get the insurance money back from them. Only problem, they never got the insurance money from Alec. So like, oh, well, God. that that doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? Uh, but but that that in itself, um, there this this story is far from over. It is just the tip of the iceberg. Be very interesting. You know, people people want wealth and they they want endless money, and it just seems that those who are extremely wealthy, there's just so much shit that comes with it. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like that? More money, more problems, as you, as Biggie would say, or, or P Diddy, or whatever. You, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it can be true. I mean, if you get yourself involved in shady shit. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of sometimes they bite off more than they can chew and they, and they keep seeking extreme amounts because they start creating lifestyles that, that go beyond the means of what their, their wealth may actually allow because they're not aware of it. But Murdoch is a different duck though. Murdoch is someone who was born into money, born into power. I don't think Murdoch ever truly knew what it was like to struggle or to, uh, to try and work your way up. It was always just assumed that, well, I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that because my last name is Murdoch. And I think that yeah. in itself as well also creates an extreme disillusion with life, probably more so than that of someone who, who earned it and worked their way up and maybe overstretches a bit and then, oh shit, I'm out of money, like lottery winners and things like exactly. that. Exactly. And, and And he seemed to be one that just the the overconfidence and and not knowing your limits and respecting that he didn't have any of that and maybe some of his his forefathers did uh, which allowed them to be successful in that county for so long yeah it's a really great point but it's just tragic it's interesting to hear the perspectives from people now that that portion is over but my friends there is still much more murdoch to come you're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.